Hey guys, welcome back to Hibiscus Motorsports. As you can see, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today, as we have the Cherokee instead of the Miata. So I'll tell you what we're doing. We are going to be doing a front spring spacer kit. It is one and a half inch lift. As now the front of the car is jacked up a little bit, as you can see. Um, but we were, we had a, or we did the leaf spring, sorry, in the back and did a one and a half inch uh, shackle lift kit. So the Jeep's been, you know, obviously a little raked toward, you know, with the front lower. So we're going to be evening that out today. So let's get right to it. So now simply, uh, all I did was I just jacked uh, the front of the car up from the axle and just have my two jack stands just holding the front right now. As there are methods online of people doing this where, you know, they support the frame and then like up in like the front area of the, by the frame or the front bumper even if they have an aftermarket bumper. Uh, and then they, they'll put a jack under the axle and lift one side up really tall and lower the other side and be able to pull it out. But I could not get that to work. That's why there's no footage of the car being jacked up. So we're just going to go with the more standard, you know, just spring compressor route and just see where we go. So yeah. All right, now, as you can obviously tell, we have both wheels and tires off. And now, for everybody's favorite part, spring compressors. So in case you aren't familiar with these things, effectively, it's just two little hooks on a, a threaded rod. Uh, this, in particular, one has little, you know, safeties right here, so it can't come flying off the spring, because... You gotta remember, these springs are designed to hold the weight of your vehicle. And that's, you know, could be anywhere from Miata's weight, which is just over 2,000 pounds, all the way to giant trucks that are weighing, you know, well over 5,000 pounds. As you know, any spring that you compress will want to rebound. So these things can borderline explode if you are not careful with them. So if you are going to use spring compressors or anything like this, be very careful on this type of setup of spring compressors. Uh, it's going to be one on this side and then one over here and you're going to tighten them evenly. So like three turns here, three turns here, you know, just run, just keep going. And that'll compress it nice and evenly and reduce the chance of these compressors breaking and causing the spring to rocket off, you know, towards the moon. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so effectively they're just a simple, you know, little bar like that. Uh, there are design ones that, you know, kind of look like a like an alligator's mouth that will grab and you just tighten one bolt and it squeezes. Those ones, though, you mostly have to order online. I just picked these up from a local auto zone. But, uh, yeah, I will catch you guys back as we are going to be slowly squeezing the spring out. Alright, so, started recording a little late, as you can tell. I started trying to do this by jacking it up, I'll, I'll put in the video clips, but by jacking it up and putting the jack stands on the axle, and then I realized that that is not going to work, as I'm going to need to make the axle, you know, pivot to help get the springs out. So, the new setup, and if you're going to do this, I, I recommend, put the, these are six ton jack stands, and the taller the better, put them right at the frame, right in front of the sway bar like so. Then you have full control where the axle is no longer, you know, supporting the actual car. So the jack is just supporting the weight of the axle. So then after that, now I'm fighting currently with that little bolt right there. Right there. That's the spring retainer bolt. Uh, don't do the mistake that I did and forget those exist and try to use spring compressors and it doesn't work. So I will catch you back once those are out. So the good news is that the actual spring retaining clip right here, you don't need to take it all the way out. You can loosen it enough where you can lift it up out of its spot and move it over. And now, uh, whatever method you would be doing, whether you're gonna be using spring compressors and to squeeze this up or you're going to do the method that I'm going to try where it is to jack up the other side of the axle and tip the whole axle like this and then be able to pull this out with a pry bar in my hands. Uh, whichever method works, you know, good, good, great. I'm going to try this method 
If it doesn't work, then the next clip you'll be seeing uh, spring compressors, but we'll go from there. Alrighty. So, as you can easily see, we're now on the passenger side. Uh, long story short, don't you just hate how short camera batteries lives are? It kind of sucks, and it's uh, definitely getting a little darker outside, so I figured I'd just finish that side and, you know, record the process on this side. Uh, what ended up working was disconnecting the sway brine link, disconnecting the two, or undoing the two bolts down here for the actual shock, and then on the inside, like I already pointed out before, the spring uh, retentioner clip right there, disconnecting all, all of those will allow this whole side to drop down much lower to the point where it's actually going to be almost touching the ground. Uh, and then I just take my jack, go over to the other side of the axle, lift that side up, which lowers the side even more, and I was able to just pull this, pull this spring right out. And yeah, so we're going to take this side step by step. Alrighty, so first things first, what we're going to do is the two bolts right there for the actual shock. Those both bolts are 13 millimeter from what I found, if you know, just if you were wondering. But yeah, so I'm just going to loosen these two and I'll catch you back. Alrighty, once these two bolts are done, as you can see, it's nice and wiggly. You don't got to do much with it, uh, it's just, you know, once we actually lower it more, it will, you know, fall on its own. Next is, uh Jesus, <laughs> no long day. Next is the sway bar end link bolt, uh, mine 11 sixteenths, works for the other side. I'm sure it will work for this side, just a pain in the ass to undo, but, I mean, if you're doing the this on, you know, any really any car. If your bushings look like this, you know, can't really see it because the lighting, but all cracked and torn, it's time to replace them. Don't, don't try to, you know, make the move of doing all this and replacing this, this old worn out hardware. It's just going to make your life even more miserable. Uh, and one quick thing, I know a lot of people like to undo, you know, the brake line torques bit right here. I didn't have to on the other side. I didn't really have to drop it low enough to the point where I was potentially pulling on the actual brake line. If you need to, you know, you're, you're nervous about it or you, you know, you need to drop it that low, definitely dis disconnect that as you do not want to break this. Not going to be fun, especially if you've been out here for as long as I have, you know, hours on end, just trying to figure out what the hell you're doing. <laughs> Alrighty. Once you get the actual top nut off, now you just got to do this one right here and then the actual end link will come right out. Don't you just love it when the previous owner of your car and steer installed a steering stabilizer but didn't actually even tighten it so it was just rattling around? That's just terrific. All right. Obviously, as you can tell, it's headlamp time. <laughs> uh, we just got that retaining uh, bolt out. I didn't show it, obviously, because this side was 10 times harder for some reason, and I already showed it on the other side. So now we are going to jack up the other side and lower this side down, and we we'll, should be able to pull the spring right out. Alrighty, so once we jacked up the other side, as you can see, the spring is ready to come out. So, I'm gonna try to twist it out. There we go. Gotta give us some, a little bit of a pull, and the spring comes right out. All right, so now you're gonna take your actual spacer. Uh, like I said, these are one and a half inch, and effectively, they'll just slide right up how the OEM is. Uh, obviously though, if you let it go, it will just fall. So the way that I found works the best, again, I'm so sorry for the poor lighting, is if you just put it on top of the actual spring and just help it go in for installation. So I'll see you back when it's installed. Alrighty. After 
a lot of hard work with a mallet and the crowbar, the spring is finally back in. So now we're gonna twist the spring so the bottom right there lines back up with its home for the retaining clip. And then it's just a matter of putting everything back together and putting the new sway bar end link on. Alrighty. Again, I am so sorry for the lighting, but once we get it, I brought the jack back over to this side, jacked it up so the new sway bar end link is going through. Now we just gotta get the actual shock back in place. I rebolted the tension or the retentioning uh, clip. Now again, with sway bar end links, you want to tighten these when the car is under load at ride height. So we're just gonna put the actual, you know, nut and top piece on. I just, you know, got this ready, but it can still move obviously. And then once the tires are back on, or the wheels and tires are back on, and the car is sitting at ride height, good news is it's a Jeep. You can fit right underneath it when it's at ride height. And we are going to fully tighten these down. Uh, I'll go over it more, but when you tighten these down, these rubber bushings will squish. You don't want to squish it so much to the point where it might potentially rip, or as you're driving, you know, it's gonna be exposed to premature wear. So, like I said, once we get there, I'll show you what the, you know, how much the proper amount to tighten it is, but yeah. And now, finally, as you can see, it is completely dark outside. We are finally done. Everything is tightened and torqued back. And now it is just time to straighten out the steering wheel as when I was just, you know, trying to loosen some stuff, I accidentally hit the actual hub and moved it. Not a big deal. <laughs> and then uh, just getting the wheels and tires back on, lowering her back down safely, tighten up the wheels and tires, and then tighten up those swear bar and rings. So let's do that right now. All right, guys. So uh, again, I apologize for the awful footage when, you know, it was super dark, but it is the next day. And so I just wanted to show, you know, the proper how much you're supposed to tighten the top of the sway bar end links. As you can see, it's just enough where it's pillowing a little bit, but not enough where this is gonna, you know, rip or being squished really, really far. Uh, you can't really feel the, the actual nut get much tighter. It does get a little bit tighter, but just, you know, base it off pretty similar to that. Again, tighten it when the Jeep is under, you know, load and all that, but uh, yeah, guys, so uh, that's that. Alrighty guys, uh, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And again, I am so sorry about the awful lighting. It's my daily. I had to get the work done on it. So that's is what it is. You know, um, hopefully we never have to do something like that again. If we do, I'm definitely going to get bigger lights, just a stupid little headlamp. But uh, again, thank you so much for watching the video. And uh, yeah, more Jeep content coming soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Peace.